Our group, group chats silly. are mainly Roger and Chris one-lining and outdoing <laughs> each other <laughs> while we all laugh. Yeah, he could be Pathfinder for a season. I'll be Mirage for a season, you know. We learned Erica Wait, loves on, heavy petting. So if I go I visit said, her booth. I no, said no, physical no, touch. Only. I FaceTimed Erica at a wedding. I was like, I, I was like, what are you doing, dude? dude? And I'm like, oh, is Johnny FaceTiming okay? me? I piss off Scablander. Mm -hmm. It's always number one yeah. favorite. You're watching convention coverage. I have a PSL right here, so. We need know, a dinner last night. Oh. Yes, sacrament. It is that time of year, isn't it? Time for the PSL. Huh? What's a PSL? A pumpkin spice latte. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Come on, I didn't know bro. The they I have a nickname for it. Oh, we, this is basically our Zoom conversation for the entire <laughs> And all we thought was, you know, man, when this is all Ooh. over, we're going to fly all over the world and hang out. And then we fly all over the world and hang out. That's right. And you just get to film it now. That's all. Yeah, and just, you know. And less wine. Quietly. A lot less wine. You guys all look incredible today. I feel you like do. everyone, like, turned up for Saturn. Yeah, you guys look turnt. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is a mom now. Can we tell? Turnt. I hear that's language. the word that the kids say. The, the kids today is saying it, this no? slang. Is that, are we past turnt? Are we past it? Okay. Just, you know, whatever you, Johnny, no whatever you guys involved say. in no creating no, not, this not, entire not, not anymore, not oh, anymore. No, I'm sweating. Why am I sweating? All right. We're all sweating. Guys, it's moist in here. It is. Oh, don't say that I word. I hate that word. Don't. I hate don't, that word. Don't There's, even say it. There it is. Who hates moist? Can I see a raise of right. hands? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. The no one likes that the word. There's a lot of people that like that word in here, though. That was actually kind of weird. I was shocked. Uh -oh. Is it in though. reference to like meats? Maybe like neutral. what kind of oh, where where <laughs> moist meat? <laughs> This or is like the a, a best cake. apex yes. panel ever. Is it like a, you want a moist cake? Can we moist meats into like a session? <laughs> apex. Which character is say moist meats in their next session? <laughs> Last one down on a moist meat. Yeah. <laughs> you get here by winning and eating lots of moist meats, friends. <laughs> Does this feel like an improv exercise to you guys a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, All right, I don't know. Might make it into the game. Uh, and this is saying. why we do not write for the game. Okay. That's At right. <laughs> right, oh. that's right. Yeah, Roger's the one who can do the improvisations <laughs> like nobody's business. He's pretty amazing. That is, that is um, If you guys don't already know by now, because you've supported this game, mm. not only created an incredible worldwide community, but this cast, we're all friends. And what a gift you've given us to continue to support the game so we get to keep uh, making voices and, and bad choices. <laughs> like water seat. eating moist but, meats yeah yeah, yeah. drinking um, did that gross anyone out I know it did I know it did yeah, yeah. there we are I know we have one yeah. okay good I'm raise your hand if you're the currently in therapy is there a format or anything you want not to really no no anyone else really no, no. Johnny, Johnny's gonna need it soon yeah, yeah. No soon we, we're discussing I'm it with him what are these panels know, normally maybe. like this is my first convention in nine years I'm not kidding nine so years I haven't been you didn't share that with us I only said it 50 times yesterday you say you're coming out today yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, okay. I don't know how you normally like the panels to go. Does somebody have to get up and do a little dance or something? Or Have we does, ruined it for him, Does guys? Johnny have to fly his drone around the hallway? And yeah, that's exactly what someone... Are you going to do a little dance? Of people. I want a little dance from you. A little dance? Yeah. A little uh, dance. That's going to that's gonna be selfie prices for that one. Dance. <laughs> selfie prices? You're going to have to share that PSL. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. Um, if you could voice act any character besides the one that you voice act now mm. in Apex, who would it be? Ooh. Seer. I knew you were gonna say. That. How did how, you know? Seer's pretty cool. Oh. Seer's pretty cool. Would, now Seer, Seer would be my favorite. Just the Nigerian accent. You know, he talks like this. He has the accent, Ooh. right? Mm. Right. Ooh. And also, fun fact. Probably shouldn't say this. Mm, you know what? I'm going to kill this myself. Never mind. Uh, yes. Oh, I hate, don't you See. hate when people do that? Ugh, now I want you're just like, all I'm going to think about the whole band is like, what am I going to say? I'm telling EK. Okay, I'll say it at the end. Don't tell EK, please. <laughs> or sing it out of him later. All right. What about you? Oh, gosh. Don't. Okay, skip me for a second. Let me think. I'm like, I, I, it's too many options. Keep going. Keep going. You. What about you? Mm, it'd be close between Watson and Wraith. Really? Like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Girl fight. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she, I just saw myself go about three notches down and she's like, oh. No, I'm like, don't, don't you mean, like, you're like, I don't know. I just feel like everybody is, sometimes I feel like I'm the non, 
Oh my god! One because everybody can do I'm like throw this microphone right now, and all these really special fun things. And I'm like, man, I wish, I wish I could do. I that. wish I just wasn't at award shows and I wasn't Fuck on you. TV. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it, Bella. I love that. <laughs> Don't love it. She's like, it's so hard. I think you guys think are like in your in your UGGs and your sweatpants, just doing voices, and, and I just have to be on the red carpet in my She's award-winning like, show. Let me explain something to you. Right as soon as af- after I get done wearing heels and putting on dresses, I go straight to. Shake Shack. It's like a tradition of mine. Mm. Like, if I have to wear heels for 30 minutes and put on makeup, I will eat Shake Shack in that same reward. outfit. That math checks out. I'm that good. That is legit. <laughs> um, I think if I had to voice a, a character, I would want it to be something that was more of a challenge, you know, to, to tap into something I maybe wasn't didn't have the skill for at first like a Watson or a Lifeline or somebody who has like an accent you know it's the same in any acting genre like I want something that challenged me that I don't know how to do and my first step into voice acting I didn't know how to do it I failed miserably and we laughed about it many many times in sessions when they would tell me to do like you're being electrocuted, okay, go. And I would think in my head, I would know what that would sound like and what would come out of my mouth sounded like Beavis and Butthead and I'd go, and everybody in the booth would laugh. They were like, wow, you really effing suck. Let's try this again. Um, And so they allowed me to fail and try and learn. And now that I feel like we've done 18 plus seasons of Wraith and and I'm still learning things, I would like a new challenge, you know? So doing something that has an accent would be awesome. Same. (laughs) You took me there, Bloodhound. Ooh. Interesting. Does Does it have to only be an Apex Legend character? Yeah. Or are you an, an yes, animated that's character? That's the question. Oh, so I, so yes. Don't try and, I didn't don't try and divert right. from the question. Yeah. No. <laughs> I got I you. Do don't Rocky worry. He's trying to let go. Turned. Wow. I'm sorry? <laughs> Not very turned. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Oh boy. I don't know I just, if that was the right use of the word, but you know, oh I appreciate God. it. Support. Yeah. Thank you. She's known you for seven years. You can go there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I look at the cast and even just trying to attempt and just joke around and do their voices. Like I was trying to do Erica's voice on, on our way here <laughs> and I was miserably failing <laughs> and we were laughing about it. Like, what, 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 what were you doing? What was that? What, what was that? See, it, it doesn't work. What it can't do, do it. It's that? not that far off. No. Drop, drop shock, drop, drop shock and hock and load. Wow. I can't do it, see? <laughs> Like, you Dropped, know, shot, you know, and blood, rocked. Blood hunt. No, it doesn't work. No. So, Dude, yeah. We should pitch doing a season where he, they give us somebody yeah. else's we just, voice everybody and we fail miserably do, for you. Like an April Fool's that would Day. Be everybody yeah, exactly. does somebody else's Oh, <laughs> that'd be good. That would be sick, actually. That would be yeah. good. Sorry, I, I, right. I'm not turned. You're right. I'm into it. Sorry. I would do Mirage because... Yeah! It's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, because... I, I mean, logistically, you look at the other characters, who am I really going to do? Like, I can do accents and stuff like that, but honestly, at this point, is it even appropriate for me to be trying to do a lot of the other characters? So I narrow it down to, you know, it, it'd be, you know, Fusey or Mirage or, yeah. Uh, well, you have Revenant, a background maybe, in but, comedy, stand yeah, comedy. Yeah. So you'd be great with those one-liners, right? Yeah, it's just <laughs> also a very, very early character, and we've gotten to know him for a long time, and, and uh, Roger's comedic sensibility is a lot like mine. So, yeah. Our group chats are mainly Roger and Chris one-lining and outdoing <laughs> each other <laughs> while we yeah. all laugh. <laughs> True. Facts. Just, Facts. He could be Pathfinder for a season. I'll be Mirage for a season, you know. I don't know. The next record session, I'll throw that out there. Gosh, that would be Run that up the flag. Well, we'll see who's Roger sort of. doing high fives <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a Freaky Friday, but in the Apex. Do I right. need to separate you, know? you two? <laughs> yeah. What's going on over here? I don't know. I don't know. Keep fighting. She's She's brothers and sisters. Yeah, with me. you know. I'm telling mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank awesome you. question. Yes. Yeah. Really thank question. you for yeah. hanging out with us for seven years. Yeah. If you guys, if Chris Edgerly, Gabe Kunda, Erica Luttrell, were Apex Legends, what would your ability be? Uh, the ability to not come in 20th. That'd be my first one. <laughs> all right. If you guys watch my stream at all. It's, ah, uh, Edgerly's knocked again. <laughs> yeah, the ability to not suck at the game. That would be my first priority. Um, weather. Be- I'm a big fan of Storm, so I'd go weather. Good one. Yeah. Wait, you just get to invent superpowers now? I thought <laughs> yes. you Yes! To- 
<laughs> you just You're owning it, Chris. Fine. Yes. Invisibility and invincibility. Thank if we're just going to go. Okay, okay. We're just out of our <laughs> That's mine. You can't yeah. take, but you, you yeah. just get invisibility. I get invisibility. Oh, okay. <laughs> I pulled it out of nowhere. Yeah. That was just me. <laughs> Weather. <laughs> I definitely uh, go with healing still. Like just more healing. I, I think those of us are support characters in real life. Why is she so I nurturing? Would love to be able to heal with a batch of cookies. Can you? Right? Yeah. She just shows oh, up with a big old batch of cookies. My cookies are actually. Like, she does. The recipe is in the game. The lifeline cookies are real, guys. I could eat she nine of bake, them right she now. She will bake you. What about we? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. She acts for. She's like, what about <laughs> cookies? Like, I just inserted. Since we're filming, uh, mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna work on that. You're the first one mm -hmm. I made cookies mm -hmm. for yes. without eggs, gluten free, because yep. she has some allergies. Mm -hmm. And that recipe, by the way, if you do like the Lifeline cookies, uh, you can do sweetened condensed milk instead of eggs mm -hmm. and almond flour. And they're cookies. and I still have the glass mm -hmm. Pyrex container, even though I moved cross country recently. I still have your container. <laughs> Sometimes I open it and I'm like, this smells like cookies. Mm. <laughs> I would love to have the ability to manipulate time. Ooh. Ooh. Like fade, sort A of. A very Christopher Nolan yeah. of you. It scares yeah. me. I would say. Yeah. And I guess like only up to like 46.5 seconds. Okay. 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 It's fair. I could still <laughs> majorly butter. Been, well, somebody's butter been thinking. Head. I mean, about you this. could. Yeah. A lot of things could happen. A lot of things. That you could change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you knew. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. I could have been forty-six point five seconds earlier for this pants. <laughs> <laughs> where's the, where, where's the guy? Yeah. The engineer. Yeah. Yes. Mine. My, mine would be pilot. Which auto pistol. Wall run, stand by for Titanfall. Oh. That's what it'd be. Oh. Oh. I it. Nice callback. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's OP. OP. Sorry, that's OP. Doesn't matter. That's way too PSO. God mode, baby. Okay. Sorry. Wow. We're pitching someone to star in wow. Titanfall 3 keep... right now, aren't we? Look at the oh. camera, Johnny. Let's make this happen. <laughs> <sighs> Believe me, I talk to the writers a lot. I beg. We're them. hard to wrangle in this morning, eh? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? We love you. Thank you so much, not thank Sabrina. You. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Why not Sabrina? I'm just gonna be thinking about that all day. Do you know any of the backstory behind your character? Because I know that can also help enhance the performance before you're able to give it. Apex doesn't really put a lot of backstory into their characters, if you've noticed. They don't really um, like that. Is it? This is what he looks like. Just go with it. Yeah. They don't really. No depth at all. Write any depth. How well, much when, did you yeah. know, Chris, though? Like, I know for Lifeline, they told me through uh, my outline stories, like, all of that, they told me ahead of time. But I know that not everyone knew their backstory. How much of your backstory did you know before the book? Um, when mm -hmm. I did the callback, this is how far back this goes, I was recording for the game in 2018. And I think I might have even been auditioning for it, like, near the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. So this goes back a ways, and for the callback, they said, okay, this takes place in the Titanfall universe. You're familiar with the Titanfall universe? And I said, no. <laughs> I, I, guys, I don't play games. I got kids. I don't have time. I knew nothing about it. So they gave me this pretty in-depth recitation Same. of what the universe was, what Marvins are, what Pathfinder is, how he's a little different from the other Marvins and all of that. And but still, when I auditioned for it, we all get we get you know like a batch of auditions usually every day, and you look at it, you look at the breakdown, which is the description of the character, you do your best for that audition, and then boom, you move on. And for this, the thing I locked in on was that it was uh, just somebody who's really optimistic and kind of clueless. And no matter what else you told me about Pathfinder, those are the two things I always zero in on when I'm reading them. And obviously, as they deepened his story, you got to learn how tragic some of his circumstances were. But because I'm playing a robot, we have to go just up to the edge of emotion and then come back a little bit. So I have to suggest a lot. And you guys listening to it will do the rest. I think. You have to meet me almost more than halfway with Pathfinder. So uh, no matter what they told me, I can only go so far because I'm not, I'm just not allowed to. That's just what his programming is like. You're a robot, yeah. So yeah. So they gave me a lot, but I'm still kind of constrained. But I, I still get to go as high as I want as far as being happy. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, uh, for me too, they, they pretty, they dumped a lot. I remember that first session, it was like, 
Oh my God. Well, when I auditioned for, um, I'm trying, Jackson, um, at first I thought it was like a medieval times game, the way it was described. <laughs> Literally, I was like, what game is this? Like, and, and then also, Newcastle's lines are very like, I will protect you. I, I you know, I, you know, I'll be your, I'll be your shield if you don't mind being my sword, you know, that type of thing. And so I was like, is this like a, just like a, you know, yeah, slicing things. And I, I, mean, I was excited. Anyway, got to the session. It was not that. <laughs> Blew my mind. Um, so yeah, they gave me all the information on, on Jackson and his backstory. But like, I was interested because I had a sister in the game. Hey, I went back and like looked at her arc and just like because it informed a lot of my character obviously right because she's looking for me um, and so yeah that was very helpful in that too but yeah they respond they do a great job of like informing you and keeping you in whatever you got going on so that you live in that world and you react naturally to things that also intersect so yeah, definitely. I mean, I defi they gave us so much in the beginning. I mean, it happens in most game sessions. You know, the devs and the people who create these games put so much into them and have just so much lore at the basis of it. So you tend to spend a good, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes at the beginning of, like, your first session going deep into the world and like painting the picture of like all the walls of where you are. Um, and so yeah, I mean I knew it was deep. I knew that she wasn't with her family, that she was looking for a member of her family. I don't know that they told me exactly who it was at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean it felt, I mean I knew there was like a, a darkness and a struggle in Bangalore and uh, and I loved it, yeah. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. And it was very clear how much they loved that world, and then it made me love it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you, it was a great question. What was your favorite voice line to record for your character? Ooh, let me get the phone. Piss off, Scablander. It's always number one favorite, right to the top of the list. When I recorded it, I was reading it, because I had been streaming the game for like a couple of years at that point, and people were constantly trying to get me to make Pathfinder curse on stream. Because so I would do voice lines for people for fun, and I said, look, it's gotta be canon, or I could say happy birthday to you, or I would do cameo videos. And then finally they wrote that line in, and I said, Are, do we really get to say this, really, oh boy? I'm like a kid, you know? And they said, yeah, yeah, and it's, we have a way, of, you know, it's not like he thought of it himself, he's repeating what he heard and all that. So it's just instantly became my favorite one. Cool. I don't know if they'll ever take it beyond that. <laughs> but I'm ready to read it if they do. Cool. I mean, mine is like the OG line from the day that we did mm. mocap when we were filming uh, with Roger and myself and, were you there? No, 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 no. they had there. a different, yeah. I, I mean, it was they, like, they it was such a bizarre, yeah, capture. they had like a yeah. performance capture person for Gibraltar who was like, seven feet tall and they actually had me doing the physicality of like grabbing his suit and pulling him down you know and pretending to stab him and saying tell death I said hello and it was such like I understood who Wraith was um I understood in my own interpretation when I had auditioned for Geist was her name at the very beginning, actually. And still to this day, when I go in for sessions, it's like, session for Geist. I'm like, that's not her name. <laughs> um, but I, I think that I, through the physicality of like the mocap moment and not just being in a booth, but understanding her story, because Wraith's story was one of the first stories that we kind of knew, um, I was able to like, I got her. You know what I mean? Like that fearlessness, that strength, that like overt leader, whatever that I understood her to be that was, you know, really behind that is a ton of vulnerability that we see the tiniest cracks into. Um, but that, that line was and still is my favorite. There's still ones though in sessions, I'm like, damn, that's good. Even after all these seasons, we still like, we still got it. We still understand Wraith, but yeah. Mine hands down is call us butter because we're on a roll <laughs> i love that one um i think for mine i i can't I, I don't know if this is the exact line but it's uh technology only achieves what gods dream of or something like that and it really informs who crypto is and like how confident he is in his skills and kind of going back to what uh the person before you was saying talking about the background of the character of like how how confident he is and how calculated he is and how 
he knows he's better than everyone and he's 10 steps above. And I, and, and, and I always wondered why he was like that in the beginning and they did give a huge backstory. And the funny thing is, is I, it, <laughs> I knew what this game was when I first got it because I, I, I played Apex day zero. Uh, and I was like, this is either Titanfall 3 or Apex Legends. And I was like, I can't screw this up because the fan base is going to kill me. So I did a ton of research and I was like, this is not strong enough. And so I went out and saw 10 re Korean revenge films mm. and made my own backstory to make sure that he was cold and calculated and better. And, and funny enough, like they, they later added like, m you know, Mila to the story and stuff like that. And they never told me about it. So it kind of worked out. But that line kind of encompasses him. I, I used to do disaster relief and still um, work with first responders and I loved that lifeline. There, there's something that happens when you're at the darkest part of the longest night, this gallows humor. So I love that she was like, come and get your birthday present. Like there's, a, there's always somebody in the disaster situation that kind of is the humor. And I love that she had that lightness. And also, it's kind of like the concept of foobar, and, and you have all these anachronisms, but there's a reason why I love the line I'm about to say, because it represents, um, you know, in a disaster, nothing actually works the way it was supposed to. And you have to take whatever you have and work with it. So, Mozambique, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, From, uh, yeah, every year they, they find out that it's an extra powerful weapon um, but I'm just really grateful to have connected with um, first responders military people like all over the world like to like, just say it just say it and they talk about what that means in the hospital or on the field where everybody knows what a Mozambique is which you're like we got to make it work I'm literally on my phone looking through <laughs> that's fine all of the epic <laughs> quips that Bangalore has had I mean I really love um, you know no matter what we get each other home I love mm. that because it's like at the heart of, you know. Say that one more time. No matter what, we get, we each, get other each other home. home. You sounded just like Johnny. Yeah. You see, you know. I got, see, I could repl yeah, You I, could do me. that. You could me. fully do that, dude. Like, Locked and loaded. You, you know, I got that. it. I got it. <laughs> but like, there were so many amazing, you know, quips in the beginning that we did, and it's like hard to remember them all, even though they come up over and over again when I talk to, to fans of the game. But, you know, I love, you know, I said, danger, close. Weren't you listening? You know, things like that. I mean, there's just so many good, just, she's not effing around, you know, and it's the fun. The good squad mate. Yeah. I love that for some reason early in the game, they decided to make Bangalore the tour guide of Apex. I know. Constantly. <laughs> That's It'll heal you. That's a tree. It's got leaves on it. <laughs> That's a river. Don't, don't step in that. It's every single possibly thing you could come across. That was like, like a little Christopher Walken over there. Like, what is that? That's a, that's a first aid kit. <laughs> Share it with your friends. Are you guys having half as much fun as we are? I hope so. I no, I don't think yeah. they are. Actually, I think they're about a third as much fun as we are. But yeah. Well, thank you so the much. The question uh, is, if each legend had their own restaurant, what kind of restaurant would it be? Mm -hmm. Easy, easy. Korean restaurant? So, yeah, you know, listen, sometimes you got pork belly with some soju, sometimes you get some rice wine with uh, seafood pancakes, <laughs> matches mm. very well with some skewers, you know, sometimes you get a little bit of beer, some peanuts, some squid, you know, things like that. Delicious. I think Pathfinders would have an item from every restaurant he was fired from. <laughs> so it would just be, you'd walk in and go, okay, you have uh, ramen and you have a cheeseburger. <laughs> you have duck a l'orange. None of this makes any sense. I know, friend, pick one. <laughs> it would just, it would make no sense. You could actually order like a bowl of, of, you know, like springs and coils and things, you know. That's our appetizer, friend. Yeah. You wouldn't want to eat there is what I'm saying. Right. Okay. I have a feeling my Bangalore would be like a chicken and waffles joint or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> Caribbean soul. Emphasis on Srini because we love our roti, you know. But yeah, definitely some, who doesn't need some soul food every now and then? Right. I mean, I feel like, like Wraith would have to just be like easy bar food. Like she's the girl who drinks like plain black coffee, french fries and chicken fingers. You know what I mean? Like, real basic. Yeah. I feel you that. You probably don't want to eat there either. Yeah. <laughs> Guinness or pale ale? Oh. Uh, Guinness, are you okay. kidding me? Yeah. Uh, my, my restaurant would be around barbecue. Mm. And uh, 
at first I was gonna say just around Thanksgiving food only. Like if you ever needed a spot oh. to come out and you know, hey, I want to visit Thanksgiving in February. Come on over to Newcastle's Kitchen. Uh, I got that's you. So new. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I love it. <laughs> It'd be nice. It'd be like cornbread, green beans, yams, Cranberry. stuffing, turkey, the whole vibe. Yeah. Pecan pie, I've apple had pie, I'm starving. PSL, <laughs> pumpkin. Yeah, PSL. <laughs> pumpkin <laughs> pie. That'd be pretty good. That'd be a very carb-heavy restaurant. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love me some carbs. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. What's like? the funniest um, interaction that you have with your co-workers like uh, oh dude I almost <laughs> on you. oh no so which sorry. zoom call are we oh, talking gosh. about <laughs> oh, last well. opening night Chantel's really is fun. your opening yeah. 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 okay yeah. okay no. I, uh-huh. okay. I, okay. Right. I mean last night we talked about what it. our love language is I knew <laughs> <laughs> We learned Erica Wait, loves on, heavy petting, so if I go visit she said, her boo. I no, said no, physical no. touch. Only. She has translated that to first aggressive <laughs> touch and then heavy okay. petting, which but is not way, what I, I said. 56 minutes to share with everybody how much you love aggressive petting. We knew it was coming in. Thank you. Dude. Yeah. You know. Wasn't expecting that answer, was yeah. it? Yeah, the bank. Yeah. Yeah. No. I wasn't expecting that. No. Yeah. no. See? Bangalore, I think your love language Bangalore would be aggressive hugs. Yeah. Yeah, just like, yeah. Ugh, just like nice brother. slide tackle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are some other? I mean, yeah, our Zoom calls over. Brands there was calls. somebody. There was somebody in there that was using a bottle of wine like a microphone, talking to. I'm not going to mention names. <laughs> yeah. Talking to us with a bottle of wine, but we're all on Zoom as though it was their microphone. Right. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that's how you know that's how it got there. In the- yeah, that same yeah. said person was like the wine bottle was still standing up, but they weren't. No, so yeah. it's an empty camera. And Branscombe Richmond, who's the voice of Gibraltar, yeah. sends very funny pictures of oh, his place chickens, in Hawaii. Goats. Chickens. He's got yeah, a goat. Yeah. You know, he'll do silly faces, and uh, yeah. So we we'll have send nice... like a text, and he'll he just send a goat takes back. Selfies yeah. from one. I don't inch. know. So right. we'll be sending pictures, and he's like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, brother? It's like you this know, much of really his face. Like They're like, hi. What's, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was, that, was that wine bottle person me? Was that me? No, it wasn't. No, no it wasn't, wasn't me. Wow. That's surprising. <laughs> Wait, but that now maybe yourself, it was, John. Bro. Maybe it was. You, no, you, were you were whiskey. Block. Yes. You yeah. were yeah. cinder block. <laughs> okay, the yeah, yeah, funniest yeah. is there, in oh. our thread, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it, is Johnny had some very creative furniture placement for a long time, and so his, She's so huge, kind. like sixty-inch television was being held up by cinder blocks. Yeah, I'm sorry, and so what? our Zoom chat and our Twitter chat started blowing up with cinder yeah. block furniture ideas, mm-hmm. couches, yeah. archways, some beautiful stuff. Like, you know? Yeah, it was great. We yeah. but, but the thing, I do do this. So anytime I have drinks with my friends, like I'm a super happy, silly drunk. I'm like, so, like one of these guys will pop up in my head. I'm like. Man, I love these guys, man. Mm. And I'll either FaceTime or I text. Dude. I texted Chantel like three Dude. in the morning. I, I, I FaceTime. I, I have one. I, I, have I, one. Test, I, I FaceTimed Erica at a wedding. I was like, I, I was like, what are you doing, dude? I was, dude like, I was like, my hair bed. was like doing all yeah. that. I'm like in my bathroom. I'm shooting in Hawaii. It's like 1130. And I'm like, oh, why geez. is Johnny is FaceTiming okay? me? I was like, is he fine? I don't know. No, my wife's all like, therapy. he's going to be drunk. And I'm like, oh. ah. Is he? I don't know. Let me. I'm gonna answer. I haven't it. gotten that Fully yet. Fully plastered <laughs> at a wedding. Oh, you're next in line. And he's yeah. like, my friends. My friends are like huge Bangalore fans. Can you say something? And I'm like, Aww. I'm like in the bathroom. Like, <laughs> what are you? But Johnny, you're golden. Like, I had needed some deep advice. It was like two oh, o'clock yeah. in the morning once, and I call him, and he's giving me some sage advice because I was like, is it just me? And he's like, very serious. And then he goes, and I, uh, I just need to tell you, I'm so drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's Johnny, yeah. guys. That's Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> so that was your rapid fire. Matt, right. You're next. You're Thank next. You. Come, you. On, you. Gabe, you're next. come on, Gabe. Come on, come on. When you're VAing a character, hmm. do you think of it as more like you're like in like a literal sense that you're just voicing this character, or that you're like sort of becoming this character mm. in a sense ah the eternal question are you pretending or are you method right are you yeah see i we have some on camera actors here who might speak more to that as far as is it different when you're doing voice acting as opposed to on camera for I, me yeah. i'm just i'm playing pretend but because actors we're very good at sharing our emotions and mine are always right here 
And since I've had kids, they're like right here. Yeah. So if you give me a line where I, I did a I did a game for Respawn, I did a Medal of Honor, and they re-released it for they made a new version of it for um, for uh, basically. Oculus? Yeah, it was the VR game, yeah, yeah. the uh, yeah, virtual reality. And we had a scene where I had to cry. And I wasn't Pathfinder, I was Sarge, you know. And Sarge is a very, you know, sort of a gruff guy, and he's around my age, and, and uh, he's just seen all kinds of battle and things. And the character dies, and he has to cry and completely lose it. Mm. And uh, I was just using my imagination. I was not imagining, I was actually Sarge. But we're actors, we're very good at imagining, even when we don't want to. Sometimes the brain's still going, hey, how about this, right? <laughs> You're like, no! And yeah, and I found, <laughs> I did about three or four takes, and you guys will be able to speak to this more. And I absolutely bawled my eyes out for two or three takes in a row. And as soon as they said cut, it was, okay, I'm fine. But on the third or fourth take, nothing. I mean, I, I acted the scene, but absolutely not a single tear came. And I thought, is this, am I dry? Am I done? And then on the fourth take, I was able to cry again. And I'm telling you, that was only from imagining. That was it. So I was mechanically bringing that forth. But I don't know if I could survive being method. That's a little immersive for me. So, but again, I'm kind of a happy guy by nature, so when I'm doing Pathfinder, it's not hard for me to just suddenly get happy. Plus, I'm being paid. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to hear what our on-camera uh, folks have to say about that. But how they approach it. Um, for my part, I it is different from on camera. I know that wasn't exactly the question, but it is different to your point. Yeah. Um, but not different from a performance aspect for me in any case. Um, it, it's just that, you know, typically uh, on camera you're playing like a whole scene. Whereas with, you know, video games or animation or what have you, you're often just playing a single line. And sometimes like a group of lines together that might be many different modes, many different what have you. So you do, like I will always uh, have something that I, that I, is related to the backstory of what's going on. Like all of the stuff I was dealing with, with, you know, Jackson and, you know, his disappearance, finding him again and thinking that I'd lost him forever and the, and the dog tags and all that was like deeply emotional. Every line I was like, you know, in that world. Like it, sometimes in a session it can take, I don't know, five, six lines to really drop into it. But once I'm into it, then I'm like Bangalore for like a couple hours and then I come out and I'm sad about it. Because mm. <laughs> you leave that person behind for a little while, you know? Yeah, I mean, things things tend to become emotionally intertwined, you know? I always say um, I have an emotional toolbox of trauma that I carry with me. Whether I am engaged in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody or I'm dealing with life or I'm in a session, sometimes things come up. Sometimes you get triggered. And when I... Like when I initially auditioned for Wraith, I had like a short little blip about her. And what I connected to was trauma. I can understand that. I think we all have like different amounts of it. And I really understood where her walls came from around that and wanting to protect herself. And there's still times when I'm in a session and I think because of the work I've done on my own self and my own vulnerability, I want Wraith sometimes to be vulnerable and she's not. Like even when we were dealing with our, our lines together and I'm like, but she's going through her brother. Why can't I just be nice and give her a hug? And like, that's just not Wraith. Yeah. Um, and, and some of those lines get, get blurred. Um, when I did the long wraith story and I had to play two different versions of her. I remember wearing like the face mocap thing and in parts of it being able to be vulnerable for one side of wraith and ball my eyes out and the emotional toolbox of trauma I can pull from. And it does, it takes, it takes some time after, like I can cry on a dime but it stays with you. So you can call cut, I'll wipe my tears, I'll make a joke, but when I get in my car to drive home, 
Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I, I'm cried out. I'm good. Like, we had some real good <laughs> purging today through the character of Wraith or Karen, whoever I've played. And I get in my car, and the next thing you know, those emotions are still there. And I have to feel through. So just because they call cut and I stop them, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to really fully release or process. Mm -hmm. And so I find with a lot of the work I've done, which has been like heavy, heavy drama, I, I usually get into a safe space, whether it's my house or my car, and I have to finish processing what I brought up from that toolbox of my own to relate to or use through a character that I'm playing. So, and in voice acting, obviously we don't, we don't always get that opportunity, but you'll have an idea you know, through a line that they have you play and you know what's going on. And, you know, sometimes I'll visualize, even in like a ping where I'm like, there's ammo over there or whatever that I have to say, I'll literally be visualizing how is she holding her gun? Where is she walking? What is she seeing? So, you know, it is, it takes a massive amount of imagination, but the lines are blurred and we're still human beings having an experience. And if you have any amount of empathy, you still can feel for a character, even if it's imagined. Mm -hmm. They yeah. definitely are. I, I was, when I recorded Jackson, it was, the first recording we did was about a week after my mom had passed. Mm -hmm. And so I needed that session because it, I, that's how I'm able to release and get things out and truck through things. And there was a line in there that was talking about his mom and how he remembered, you know, the way she looked, the way, you know, she smelled and some of the things of his childhood and, you know, Doing that session was one of the hardest things, but such a release for me. And I was able to just put all my emotions and my gratefulness and thankfulness for my mom in those lines. And it, it was beautiful. It came out beautiful and I will never forget that. It was, it, that's why this game is so special to me because it helped me process that. And so yeah, that, the lines get blurred. I think there are moments 100%. where you're able to kind of um, be like, wow, this is a way I can release into this and make it come to life. Who would have uh, known? That happened to me with, with Dishonored, too, actually, because my dad had passed, like, maybe a year, a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. And that, so that was crazy because, yeah. like, the whole sort of arc of the game was my father, you know, so it was, I was very in that for, like, months, months, year, whatever. Um, but, yeah. It's, what we it's, do is imaginary, but what we do is actually truth-telling. Right. We're yeah. here to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. even if all we can tap into in a character is something they've been through. We may not look like them, we may not, but like, it's like human beings. If you actually tap into the depth, you can understand loss, grief, mm -hmm. being scared. Like, it's just telling the truth. Right, you're only ever bringing yourself to those moments. It's just, you know, as, as Chris was saying, you <coughs> use your imagination, you use your, your emotional toolbox, your past traumas, your experiences, and you bring it to that moment. And so it's you in that moment as that character, meaning as that person who has all this other experience that you know about. And you just bring all of that and it coalesces in that moment. And we all know as human beings, it's just why when we watch things or we play games, we ourselves cry, we feel emotional, we get chills. It's the same thing for us as actors, you know, we'll read a line, we'll know the context of it, we get chills, we get emotional, we get involved, you know. Yeah. Although I was created in a lab by six scientists, right. so I can draw on that. Yeah, I don't know if you know right that him. But also yeah. what you're hearing too is that it's you as that character and anyone that's listening that wants to be an actor, a voice actor, um, there is a toolbox that only, uh, there's an exquisite math that you only have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so instead of wasting any time, especially in games, we have a shorthand. It's not like sometimes film and television, it's very fast. And the exquisite math of you, of how you would process death, loss, irritation, inspiration, uh, you know, even shutting down because you're overwhelmed, the math of who you are and how you would be in that is, is accessible to you always, oh. right? And so you, the resonance of your authenticity, it's you as a doctor, you as a soldier, yeah. you as a scientist, you as a mother who's failed, you as someone who's just been jilted. Yeah. You instantly can get to something that resonates. And so instead of worrying about, well, what would the voice sound like exactly? Mm -hmm. It's your voice, but your voice informed by your math mm -hmm. and your experience and your expression. Right. And so voice acting maybe 20 years ago was all about being exactly <laughs> something else. Don't spend any time mm -mm 
trying to be someone that you are not. You have something that you can add two or three things on top of it, but 90% of your magic as a human being, whether you're an accountant or an actor, is everything that you have been and are going to be. It's interesting, it reminds me of this clip. That it, was it John, John Cephas Jones Jr.? Is that who passed recently? I might be oh, yeah. misremembering his name. But okay. who, This Is Us played um, um, Sterling K. Brown's uh, biological father in that show and did so much Broadway, all the many, many plays. Um, and he had a whole thing about, um, you know, he was doing a play directed by Philip Seymour Hoffman and Philip Seymour Hoffman said to him, you know, you are enough. Um, and what he took that to mean and what it, what it meant, what it was intended to mean was that, you know, you are, what you're bringing to a character is the things that we all as human beings in our lives are uh, sort of taught to hide. We've always been hiding, but as an actor, you bring all of those pieces, all of those vulnerabilities to a character and that's what ends up resonating with an audience because we all have that. We all have those pieces we're hiding and we're trying to circumvent to like fit into sort of this sort of societal construct that we're in. But as an actor and as an artist, it's your responsibility to, you know, drop your shields mm. and show people those parts. Yeah, yeah um, I wanted to go off of what Chantel was saying. Like, f to me, it's the same. It's, you're doing the same amount of character work and the more detailed you get with the character, the more real it is for you. And that's like what she was saying is you're trying to bring truth. So if you're playing make-believe, like the more you think about the world and your character and what this character might do in this world and, and you, ha you know, the more you know about it, the more uh, informed you are so you can kind of portray that. And you know, the mic is just a tool as is a camera and lights. And the, to me, the only difference is there's just a mic. And then if, if it's a television show or movie, there's a camera, you got some marks. And, but I still, I, I don't know about the other guys, but I still, I put, I put my gun up. Oh yeah. I point yeah. and I do these things. Well, it's not organic if you're like, Okay, I'm firing. Well, well really I mean, work. <laughs> I'm well, firing like, right now. I'm sitting. Pew pew. Because sometimes like three, four hour sessions happen, and then you get tired. And yeah. like, Cra like our director Craver's like, "Hey, Johnny, can we can we punch it up?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, it gives me a reminder." So then I'll like, I'll actually yeah. just I'll just play it out as if mm -hmm. there was a camera there. Um, but you know, that's me. Yeah. Totally. No. Yeah. Same. Great. Same time. Thank you for the yeah. question. Awesome I mean, question. therapy. Wow. We love it. Thank yeah. you, too. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you. If your legends lived in 2023, yeah. what, would your, what would their jobs be? You can't say voice actor. Newcastle would be a firefighter. <laughs> I'm makes joking. Sense. You could say doctor. No. Pathfinder would be customer service. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> And he would never successfully serve anybody, but they wouldn't be upset about it for some reason. Yeah. I'd be in London with my girl Connie Constance doing British rock and punk yeah. music. Oh my God. I'm like, what job could somebody just lock themselves in a closet and be alone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, She'd back be a counselor. Yeah. Now, Wraith would be hosting a college radio music program. Here's another one from Metric for you. <laughs> I'm gonna I go punch it. myself in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe like subsistence farming with like ranch Aww. sort of grass fed mm. animals. I don't Aww. know. I really don't know why. It just came to me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, like a Bitcoin miner? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. I feel Nothing that. Nothing legal. I feel that. <laughs> Crypto would be up to no good. Yeah. Can Wraith be a welder? I like <laughs> welder, yeah. was like, yeah. can she be a welder? Just I like for the mask. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She'll make you a wear the mask in the car. Okay, okay, you can make oh. like, like, uh, like horseshoes for my horses. Today. You know, like we'd all be bad. Yes. She right? could use the portals to like transport heavy objects. Perfect, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to start building skyscrapers on my own. <laughs> <laughs> be working in the warehouse at Home Depot and just, uh, oh, get it. You guys go home. Peeps, this was the yeah. best Apex yes. Legends So channel. much fun, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much fun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You. Please give up.